In this video, we will be looking at what is posterior capsular opacification, its treatment and as always there will be a lot of real life videos to give you a more realistic picture. So the journey of a cataract patient goes from having gradual painless progressive diminution of vision due to cataract to getting a pristine clear vision after cataract surgery. But after a few years, this vision again starts to decrease due to formation of posterior capsular opacification PCO. In Hindi we call it lens par jalana ya lens par pardana. Now this PCO is not a type of cataract but still it is also known as secondary cataract or after cataract just because it presents like cataract with gradual painless progressive diminution of vision. Patients can also have glare, reduced contrast sensitivity and sometimes monocular diplopia. PCO is the most common complication of cataract surgery occurring in up to 50% of patients within 3 years of surgery. However, the incidence has nowadays decreased due to better IOL design and material. This is how a clear lens appears on slit lamp examination. And this is how PCO appears on slit lamp examination. This is in diffuse illumination. You can see the round margin of capsular axis. Findings become more prominent on a slit beam. Note how the posterior capsule is opaque. But why does the opacity develop after cataract surgery when we have already removed the cataractus lens? Looking at the structure of an adult lens, it is the anterior epithelial cells especially in the equatorial region that are actively dividing and progressively lay down new lens fibers to form nucleus and cortex. During cataract surgery, we create an opening in the anterior capsule known as capsulorexis. Remove the nucleus and cortex through this opening and put an intraocular lens. As you can see, the posterior capsule and some part of anterior capsule and anterior epithelial cells are left behind. These residual subcapsular epithelial cells proliferate and migrate along the posterior capsule to form regeneratory type of PCO, which might be in form of Elschnig pulse or Sommering's ring, or they may undergo metaplasia and transformation into myofibroblast, leading to fibrotic type of PCO, which causes fibrosis and contraction of capsular bag. When we look at PCO on retro illumination, the cells have a vacuolated pearl-like or soap bubble-like appearance. The term Elschnick's pearl is particularly used when the swollen cells are grouped into a cluster at edge of capsulotomy. Somering's ring is a PCO in form of ring, classically formed in periphery of capsular bag in between anterior and posterior capsule. It was seen with older methods of cataract and is clinically uncommon now. Treatment of PCO is by nd yak posterior capsulotomy. That is a neodymium doped yttrium aluminium garnet laser with a wavelength of 1064 nanometer is used to create an opening in posterior capsule. Laser machine is set to the posterior defocus mode. Note that anterior defocus mode is used for making peripheral aridotomy. Energy is kept at around 1 millijoule. Start with low energy and gradually increase if necessary. The idea is to use the lowest amount of energy required to create an opening. Usual range is from 1 to 3 millijoule depending upon thickness of PCO. We try to keep the total energy applied to a less than 80 millijoule. Procedure is performed in a dark or semi-dark room. Patient is explained the procedure and made to sit comfortably on the machine. A fixation target is used to fix it with the other eye. Slit lamp beam is kept narrow and at an oblique angle. Topical anesthetic drop is put, especially if we are performing the procedure using a yak capsulotomy lens. A capsulotomy lens stabilizes the eye, improves laser optics and thus increases its accuracy and efficiency. Its use is recommended but not always necessary and most of the surgeons perform yak capsulotomy regularly without lens. Laser is now focused using an aiming beam which has four dots which appears as a single dot when focused. The point of focus is kept slightly posterior to the posterior capsule. When laser is fired, energy is generated at this point which results into a shock wave that travels forward and ruptures the posterior capsule. The reason for keeping the focus posteriorly is to prevent any iron damage. 
firing the laser close to eye wall may result in eye wall pitting which are permanent scars over the eye wall there are two primary patterns in which a capsular opening is made cruciate and circular in cruciate pattern laser shots are applied from 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock position and then towards 3 and 9 o'clock position this is how the opening looks like upon completion advantage of this type of opening is that lesser number of shots are required and therefore lesser amount of energy is required also there is no free floating tag of capsule problem with this technique is that if eye wall pitting occurs the pits will be in the visual axis and might cause visual disturbances to the patient in a circular pattern a circular opening is created by firing shots adjacent to each other in a circular manner this requires more number of shots therefore greater amount of energy but the advantage is that even if pitting occurs it won't be in the visual axis a completely circular opening may result in a free floating tag which might be perceived as a floater leaving the lower part intact prevents this from happening and the tag settles down with gravity and is less likely to cause a floater size of capsulotomy should be less than that of the iol optic size but greater than the pupil size in scotopic conditions so it is roughly around 4 to 5 mm a capsulotomy that is larger than the optic size can result into vitreous prolapse the success rate of ndiag laser posterior capsulotomy is more than 95% so the patients again enjoy pristine clear vision after procedure complications are usually rare with the procedure eye wall pitting is mostly visually insignificant transient iop rays can be treated with anti glaucoma agents like bimetinone complications like cystoid macular edema and retinal detachment are of concern mostly in high risk patients and finally sometimes a surgical membranectomy with vitrectomy cutter scissor or ziglers knife may be required in place of yak cap like when there is a very thick dense pco that does not break with laser or if the patient is unable to sit on the machine like in pediatric cases uncooperative patient and mentally challenged patient thanks for watching the video guys and don't forget to like share and subscribe if you found it useful